Hey everybody, welcome back to the screencast of the week and today we're going to be talking about the future of CSS as you know it. So this weekend, as I usually do, I try to read as much as I can and I read a very interesting book called Everything You Know About CSS is Wrong by Rachel Andrew and Kevin Yank. Very, very, very interesting book and it talks about how now that with the coming release of Internet Explorer 8, they have finally risen to the challenge and implemented all of the CSS specs. What that means is we can now begin building websites using uh, some advanced CSS styling like CSS tables, which is what this screencast is going to focus on. Now, you might hear tables and immediately think, no, everything I've ever learned says you don't build with tables, especially for some of you younger folks. Try not to confuse CSS tables with HTML tables. Now, HTML tables describe what the content is. Okay, So that should only be used for tabular data. On the other hand, using a CSS table, that's only speaking aesthetically, saying it should visually look like a, CS, like a table, but that doesn't mean you're using that, those tables, all right? So remember, there's a distinction between those two, and you don't need to worry. They're not related in any way. So what we're going to do today is, in 10 minutes or so, we're going to build as quickly as we can just a very... Uh, the layout for a website using current trends. And then we're going to take that and in maybe a minute or so, we're going to move that up to using CSS tables just to show you how much unbelievably easier it is to build this way. And you can actually implement these in, a, in most of the modern browsers, Firefox, Opera, Safari. The only one that doesn't is obviously IE6 and IE7. So that's why with the coming release of IE8, it's getting everyone excited because you can slowly, as IE8 becomes, this, becomes uh, more used, you can slowly begin to implement these, especially in the next two years ago. You're gonna, two years from now, you're going to be building websites entirely different. So let's go ahead and get right into it. I have a blank index.html file. I'm going to add a new CSS folder and we'll create a new style sheet. And I'm going to call it default.css. All right. And the next step is just to drag that into, oh, I already have it from a previous tutorial. Okay. So let's go ahead and create the basic markup. We're going to do this as simply as we can just to give you an idea of what's involved. So we'll do a wrapper div and then a header. Which one? My header. Okay, and then we'll do a wrapper for the main area. And this will house an unordered list, which will serve, you know, maybe as the navigation. And I'm just going to call it one. And like I said, just to do this as quickly as I can, I'm not going to bother with home about, you know, things like that. This is just to get the layout formed. And then I'm going to do another div called primary content. And we're just going to build a, you know, two column, your bread and butter two column layout. And I'm going to copy some dummy data. Last week, one of you criticized me for saying data instead of data. Called me a stupid American. P pissed me off. Okay. But I will call it data from now on. Just kidding. Okay, so we have our standard paragraph text. We have primary content. UL. I c I'm going to give it a nav, even though it's not really necessary. Main, header. That should be good. So let's go ahead and view this in the browser. Okay, and we come with exactly as you would expect. We have our header, our navigation, and our main content. Let me add one more quick thing. We'll just add the standard footer. Come back to the page, refresh it, and that adds. So just to give some distinction, I'm going to add some background, uh, background colors for each of the elements. So I'm going to come into my CSS file. It ain't going to be pretty, but it'll show you the difference. We'll do color, whoops, background color, just give it red. Nav, background color is blue. I usually do this a lot when I'm designing because uh, if you add, you know, some people add borders, border colors to, to show the distinction, but that can throw off your layout. So usually uh, using background colors is the best method. 
primary content, background is yellow, and footer, I'm going to give a background of red as well, background red. Come back and let's see what that gives us. Okay, pretty much as we would expect. So now using current trends, we're going to use floats to create our two column layout. So navigation, as you would normally do, let's set it maybe a width of, I don't know, 150 pixels and float it to the left. The next step would be uh, the primary content, we're not going to float it, we're just going to add a margin left of, let's say, 150 pixels and give it a bit of padding, maybe 0.5 m's on the left and right. Let's see what that gives us. Okay, now we're getting a little bit of this overflow into the primary content, and that's because by default there are margins and padding on unordered lists. And let's go ahead and zero out the H1 tag, uh, the unordered list, and the list item. Just say margin zero, padding zero. And that should shift it back into place. And it did. Okay, so this is your standard layout. The only other thing I want to do is give a state of width for our wrapper div, maybe 800 pixels, and set the margins to auto to center it on the page. Okay, so hardly pretty. Get rid of those list items in a second. But other than that, and add some actual white text for the anchor tag, but other than that, this is your, you know, your standard two-column layout, obviously just much prettier. So let me add these last two, last few styles, and then we'll go a bit further. So list style, none, and I'll just change the background to gray. Okay, so immediately off the bat, you see that because we floated the navigation to the left, it is only going to take up as much space as is necessary because it's a floated element, so it's taken out of the flow of the page. So what you would normally have to do is go in and actually manually create a background image that you can tile vertically. So we're going to do that right now. But we are getting this spacing between the footer and the header, and that's because we have margins on our paragraph tag. So let's quickly do that. I'm going to switch that from margins to padding. And I think that should clear that up. And it did. Okay, so now let's go into Photoshop, create our background image, and move along. So you can see all of this, it's just becoming so complicated just to create a simple two-column layout. Okay, I took a snapshot, I'm gonna paste that in. But you know what, since I'm on such a tiny screen, it's really hard to maneuver. I can't even see all of Photoshop from here. So what I'm gonna do is grab these colors, just this gray and this terrible color, and I'm gonna create a new file, and it's 800 pixels wide because that's the size of, size of our wrapper div. And I'm just gonna hit an arbitrary height value, 10 pixels sounds about right. Okay, and we know that our navigation is 200 pixels wide, so I'm going to create a new guide, a new guide at 200 pixels, and I'm just going to grab this with a marquee, hit Alt Backspace to paste it in. Although I believe that was yellow, if I remember, the gray was for the navigation. So let's do that again. Okay, and once again, grab the navigation, hit Alt Backspace to enter the gray. Let me make sure that's right. What an awful color. So I'm going to hit Control alt shift s or go to File and click Save for Web and Devices. And I'm going to save it in my solution. And, just, and I'm going to call it I'm going to call it bg.png. Come back to my solution. If I re refresh You'll see there's my image. So now we just need to attach it, and we're going to attach it to the main div that wraps our navigation and the content. So we'll say background, URL, and since my CSS is within a folder, I need to actually go up one folder. So period, period, slash, bg.png, and repeat it, Y. Come back, refresh the page. And so now let's see how easy it is to use using CSS tables. So what I'm going to do is copy all of this here, and I'm going to add a new style sheet called IE. 
because as I said before, though Firefox and Opera and Safari support CSS tables, IE7 and below do not. So we're going to have to create some alternate styling for those browsers. Save it. And now let's come back and let's change a few things. We're not going to need this background image because we're working with a table. And I'm going to... There's the float. I'm going to get rid of the float because no longer are we going to work with floats. So the first step is to take our wrapper. In this case, will be the main div. And I'm going to set the display to a table. Remember, this is not an HTML table. It's only speaking aesthetically. There's a big difference. Since the main wraps the primary content in the navigation, I'm going to set the display of the navigation to table cell. And I'm going to do the same for the primary content. And we've set the width. Now, I don't need, because we're not using floats, I don't need to set a margin left to the primary content. So let's come back to the page, refresh it. Remember, we removed the background image that we tiled to create the columns. Refresh it. But look, I've refreshed the page, and it's still working perfectly, even without the background image. And that's because we have the display set to table. So let's copy this and view it in IE, unfortunately. I promise you this will work. This will look exactly like it does in Opera and Safari. But we come to, I'm going to use the program for Windows called IE Tester. I'm going to paste this into IE7. And I'm also going to create a tab for IE6. OK, so you can immediately see. The CSS for IE comes to the, the table, and it doesn't know what to do, so it just stacks them. It, it ignores it. So even though it looks just great and it's simple as can be in the modern browsers, we're going to still, at this point, at least for the next couple of years, have to compensate for IE. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Come back to my page, and let's write some conditional styling. OK, so we'll say. Uh, let's do if less than or equal to IE7, then we're going to link to that style sheet. I'm going to change default to IE, and then I just need to close this out. And if I think that's right, come back, come to IE, refresh it, and you can already see. Oh, looks like I made a quick mistake. Let's come back. And I'm th there must be a space between IE. Come back to IE Tester. Do a refresh all. OK, there we go. So on this tiny screen, I can't zoom out, but you can see IE is picking up the, the, the current trends for using float. And then let's just make sure there's no mistakes in IE. Come down. Yep, no mistakes either. So. Opera, Safari, and Firefox are going to pick up the new trends, and then IE are going to use the floats and, and the hacks, essentially speaking. So you might be thinking to yourself, well, at this point, why is it even worth using CSS tables when I can't also use them in IE? Now, there's a couple of answers, and most of these answers actually come from Rachel and Kevin themselves. Their main answer is IE with the release of IE8 is finally coming up to standards and doing what we've been asking for years. So now, as they said, it's our turn. It's our turn because we've been saying you need to give us the, the tools to create the websites w the way we want to create them. So now that they have, we need to utilize those tools and we need to use the latest standards to create our websites. Now, until IE8 becomes widespread, we need we still need to compensate for IE7 and below. But honestly, that may not be more than a couple of years. So you should go ahead and get started with it. Get into the custom of building websites this way. It really doesn't require that much more work to, to compensate for these older browsers. And by the way, you should go into IE8 and get rid of these redundant styles because all that you really need, you could probably reduce this down to a couple lines. All that you really need are the float and the margins. So I'll go get rid of that on my own time for the downloadable source code. But this gave you just a quick primer on exactly how to use CSS tables. And could you realize, you know, with using the CSS tables, we, we created this layout in, in, what, maybe two minutes? And let's say down the road I decide, you know what, I want to add another column. 
easy. We just come back. Uh, let's see. Right after our second, our primary content, I'm going to add a new div called secondary content. And let's just paste some dummy text. And then all that we would need to do is come in and also set secondary content to have a display of table cell as well. And then let's set maybe let's set maybe a width of 90 pixels. And just to show you, let's set a background color of orange. And of course, we would need to go into our IE version and update that. But you can see here immediately how easy it is to build your layouts using these CSS tables. It's it's almost laughable how easy it is. So that's been your screencast of the week. I'd love to hear your thoughts and what you think about this. And if this is something that's piqued your interest, I highly recommend just go ahead and purchase the book. Go to your local bookstore, get it off Amazon. You can go to sitepoint.com slash books slash CSS wrong one to look over it. And for more screencasts, and tips and tutorials, be sure to subscribe to the NetTuts RSS feed. And if you are a template designer, do me a favor and check out themeforce.net. If you need to purchase templates for a client or you simply have some extra templates that you want to sell and make some extra money for yourself, this is the site where you can do it. It's themeforce.net. See you later. Bye.